Okay, solving an equation. This is one of the equations like we've done for a lot of Bellwork problems. Also, it was similar to at least one of the last quiz questions. It will involve all five steps. We have distributed property first. We have like terms that are on the same side of the equation. We have like terms that are on the opposite sides of the equal sign. And then we have just your standard two-step equation. So adding or subtracting a term to get rid of it, and then dividing by a term to get rid of the, or to cancel out the um, number and get the x on that side. So I'll walk through it. So first, again, step number one, do we have the distrib distributed property? Yes, we do. So we have the distributed property. We're going to use this 5 and multiply it by this 2, and then this 5 and also multiply it by the 1. And then do all of these steps out. So 5 times 2x, and then that's going to be plus 5 times 1. I haven't really talked about this, but when you see this math, it means you first are going to do the multiplication here, and then you do the multiplication here. You don't multiply 5 times 2x and then try to add it to the 5, which you wouldn't be able to do. So this will give me 10x plus 5 times 5. Now over on the left-hand side, I'm going to go back to my back end. I still just have, for now, 7x subtract 4, subtract 3x. I could have gone ahead and combined the log terms in the same step. That would have been fine. I'm just breaking it step by step. All right, so step number two, we'll do this in green. So now I've gotten rid of the distributive property. So the, the equation that I came up with on the right side was this. This is my new left side equation. Right there. I got rid of the distributive property. That's what I'm left with. Now, for the left-hand side, I can say 7x and 3x can be combined. I do not need to add 3x underneath. A lot of people are adding 3x down here and then adding 3x over here. We do not do that. That would be the equivalent if you had a seesaw and it was in perfect balance. That's the equivalent of putting two people on the same side of the seesaw. That does not keep the seesaw in balance. Anything that you do, you have to do it on both sides of the seesaw. And this is the middle of your seesaw, wherever that equal sign is. We can't do two things on the left side. So I'm going to get rid of that. Let's erase that. So now what I would do is I would say, well, let's go back to my pen, my green pen. I need to combine, this is just 7x subtract 3x, which would give me 4x, positive 4x. And then I still have the subtract 4. That just comes down through there. That's where I got that from. So I have 4x subtract 4, and then the rest of the equation is equals, and I have the 10x plus 5. I didn't really set, I just bring that back down. So 4x subtract 4 equals 10x plus 5. Now is when I go ahead and I need to move one term to the other side. I'm basically trying to get the x's all on one side of the equal sign. And then I'm going to try to get the x all by itself. So whenever I move the x's, I always go with the coefficient that is the, has the lowest value. So I'll go with blue now. So that means I'm going to get rid of the 4x right here. So I'm going to say... Let me get rid of that. So I don't confuse anybody and make you think that's division because it's not. So I'm going to say subtract 4x, subtract 4x is going to get rid of that. So that's going to go to zero. Cancel all that cancels out. It goes to zero. I'm still going to be left with that negative 4, but I'll come back to that. If I subtract 4x on one side of the seesaw or one side of the equal sign, then I have to subtract 4x on the other side of the equal sign. So I subtract 4x on the other side of the equal sign. That over here is going to give me 6x. I'm going to just bring down, that's a negative 4, don't forget about the negative part. Bring down the negative 4, 
I just bring down the five. So now I have negative four equals six X plus five. Let's do the page a little bit. So my next step, I need to get X all by itself. A lot of people right here are trying to take this negative four and move it toward the variable. We don't move stuff to the variable once we have the variable all on one side. We're trying to get X alone. That's our ultimate goal. The only reason we move the negative four X over is because we had a tenant and we needed to combine them. Right now, all we have is the six X. So we need to move the five away from the variable X. So I need to get rid of this five. I'll go to purple now, I guess. So I need to get rid of the five. Right? So I get, oh, that's funny. I said get rid of the five. So I need to get rid of the five. So now I'm getting rid of that on this side because I'm trying to get X all by itself. That means I can get, put the negative five over here, which gives me negative nine. Now, again, I just have the six X coming straight down so I don't do anything with that. So I have six X equals negative nine. So that's my last step. I'm going to go ahead and um, let's see what color I want to use. I want to use orange, really. Uh, I'm sorry, yellow, because that's not really going to show up. Let me see if I can change to another color of orange. Here, I'll change to orange. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but uh, yeah, it didn't work. But... I'm just going to go ahead and go back to black, I guess. So my last step, I divide by 6, because again, I'm trying to get x all by itself. And by dividing by 6, I get rid of the 6, which is good to 1. And then that means I need to divide this negative 9 also by 6. Which means I get x equals... 1 and 3, 6, or I should say it equals, I guess if I reduce that, it's negative 3 over 2. I just divided 9 by 3, and I divided 6 by 3. That gave me 3 over 2, negative 3 over 2. I'm just going to leave it like that. That's fine. X equals negative 3 over 2. If you wanted to, negative 3 over 2 is also equal to negative 1.5. So you could change it for that also if you really wanted to. Um, but negative three half works. As the very, very last step, what I could do is I could come all the way up. Again, look at my original equation. 7x subtract 4, subtract 3x equals 5 times 2x plus 1. So I'm going to rewrite that. 7x... I'm going to rewrite 7x subtract 4, subtract 3x equals 5 times 2x. Maybe it was plus 1, is that right? Plus 1, yes. If I'm correct, I can plug this negative 3 halves in everywhere where I see x, and I should get both sides being equal. So let's try it. So I get 7 times, I'm just going to put negative 1.5 for this. Negative 1.5, subtract 4, subtract 3 times negative 1.5, boom, boom, should equal 5 times 2. I'm going I'm to go ahead and do the math since I'm running out of room. 2 times negative 3 halves is just negative 3. So I'm going to replace this 2 times x. I'm just going to replace that with a negative. Oops. I'm going to replace that with a negative 3 plus 1. Again, negative 3 is just 2 right above. So I'm looking at this right here. I'm looking at that right there. That's one. It's easy to do this in a small one. So this 2x right here, that 2x is where I get the negative 3 right down below. 
I just moved like a few times negative three halves and that gives me negative three. You can put R times negative 1.5. You can put in your calculator if you want to test it. So for now, if I'm doing the math on all of that, seven times negative one and a half comes out to be negative 10.5. So negative 10.5, subtract 4, uh, 3 times, it's actually negative 3 times negative 1 half, so that's going to be plus 4.5. It's going to equal negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, times 5 is negative 10. So now if I do the math over here on the left, I should get negative 10. Well, negative 10.5 subtract 4 is negative 14.5. And then plus 4.5. So plus 4.5 should equal negative 10. Negative 14.5 plus 4.5 is negative 10. So that was correct. So that's my final step. If you plug it in and you don't get the same answer on both sides, you did something wrong in the equation. Or you did something wrong, you did the math and plugged it in. So you can get both of those.